Dear learners, welcome back to the wonderful world of English language. Today, we are going to do Chapter 4, A Question of Trust by Victor Canning from Class 10th Supplementary Reader, Footprints Without Feet. As we all know, the supplementary readers is given to enjoy the stories, build interest in the language and to develop a comprehension from the story. Let us see, before I begin the chapter, the learning objectives of the day would be, read the short story, a question of trust with understanding, identify the events with main idea and the sequence of ideas. Secondly, appreciate or enjoy the story, interpret the events with the theme of the story and you would be able to connect it with your own daily life. Let's begin. Before I begin the chapter, I want to know you better. What do you like to do in your free time? You like to play, read, dance, listen to music, play some instrument. I like to read. I like to read books. Wonderful books. We all like to do a lot of things in our free time. But one thing is our absolute favorite. That thing is called a hobby. So, for me, reading would be my hobby. What about you? Is it playing? Is it music? Is it dancing? Is it computers? Anything could be your hobby. But... Hobby might not be free. We may need something to continue our hobby. Like if I read, I would need some books. If I play some instrument, I would need that instrument. What about you? Do you need something extra to fulfill your hobby? To fulfill your passion for that hobby? What could it be? Where do you get that money from? The thing I need might need some money. Books are not always free. Although you can find some thing, books for free on the online portal, but if you want to buy or you want to read a specific book, you might need some money. So I have to pay for it. Similarly, your hobby also might need some money to continue. Where do you arrange that money from? Think, think, think. Like, I can ask my parents. I can take the money from my pocket money. I may work also, part-time work. But if I am not able to do so, if my parents do not have the money, then what will we do? Please think, if we are not able to arrange for the money, how would you arrange it? Would you be ready to steal? Would you be ready to do something wrong? Please think. Please look at the screen. There is a picture on the screen. Can you identify who is this person? What this person looks like? Mm, what could be his work? His family? His behavior? Can you point out? I am using some words, you may some use your own. So, you are right, he is a thief or a robber. What he is doing? He is stealing, he is opening a safe. If you remember, we have heard something like this in the last chapter also. Great. So, what kind of a person this would be? Not good at least. Let me continue. Look at this second picture. What is he doing? What kind of a person he is? What could be his family background? What could be his profession? I think he looks like a gentleman. He's reading. He's dressed well. He's from a good family. Great. Now look at the third picture. The girls. Look. How is this female looking? Beautiful lady, elegant, from a good family. 
he could be working, she could not be working, anything. Now, pause and think. If I show you all the three pictures together, pay attention to your screen. Can you find something common among these people? I know the story, so I know what is common, but do you? So how do I find what is common among these? Go through the chapter, read it, then come back to the picture and think. Can you find something common in it? Think about the picture, read the title. Can you guess what the story is about? Guess, guess, guess. Let's keep your thoughts with you and continue with the lesson about the chapter. There are various sayings about the thieves you must have heard. It is said, you must be a thief to catch a thief or there is honor among thieves. Ha, can you recall a very famous movie about it? I can, you think. This saying does this story illustrate. Let us read and see. The story is about a thief who gets a taste of his own deeds. What does that mean? That he is fooled by another thief. Let's continue. It would be better if we read the chapter ourselves. But as I said before, listening to the story is also enjoyable. It develops our listening skill or interest in the story. We can use audio text available at the CIET website or you can click on the link given on the screen. Now let us listen to the some part of the lesson and then we will do a small activity. I might ask some questions on it. The chapter, everybody thought that Horace Danby was a good honest citizen. He was about 50 years old and unmarried and he lived with his housekeeper who was worried over his health. In fact, he was usually very well and happy except for attacks of hay fever in summer. He made locks. So what, what was his job? He was a locksmith and was successful enough at his business to have two helpers. Yes. Horace Danby was good and respectable, but not completely respectable. Fifteen years ago, Horace had served his first and only sentence in prison library. He loved rare expensive books, so he robbed a safe every year. Every year he planned carefully just what he would do stole enough to last for 12 months and secretly bought books he loved through an agent. I hope you have heard to the audio well. After listening to the two paragraphs you have heard in the audio, what impression do you get about Horace Denby? You can use words from the text. I am giving you a minute to complete the graphic organizer shown on the screen. Let me help you out. Horace Danby. He is a good and honest citizen. Mm. What is the verb before it? He is thought to be. Right. So you have to mention that he is thought to be a good and respectable citizen. 50 years old, he is unmarried, is usually well except there is a small problem with him. What? Hay fever. He suffers from hay fever. He made locks. So he is a locksmith. Is he successful? Yes, he is because we know he has two servants. He is not completely honest. He loved rare and expensive books. So what would be his hobby? Reading rare and expensive books. Good. He robbed one safe every year. What did he do with the money? He used to buy those books. Let us, I am giving you a minute to complete your graphic organizer. I hope everybody has done it. Let's continue. Now that we have filled this organizer, can you think, is he trustworthy? Can you trust him? Hmm, 
I won't. Why? Because he steals. What? He robs one safe a year. Why? To buy books. What makes you trust a person? Hmm. What kind of a person would I trust? He should be honest. He should be good. He should not do something wrong. You can make your own pointers. Please think carefully. Let us try and explore this theme further through this chapter. I hope everyone has read the chapter. Let us summarize the chapter for you. Horace Danby was a 50 year old successful unmarried locksmith. He was a successful businessman with two assistants to help him. Thought as good and respectable, he was not totally honest. He was fond of rare and expensive books. Expensive, a lot of money. He purchased them at any cost. For this, he robbed a safe every year. He planned the theft well. This time, he had studied the house at Shotover Grange in great detail for the theft. There was no one at home except the dog, Sherry. He entered the house wearing gloves not to leave any fingerprints. What does this tell? Yes, he was very careful. He began his work. Flowers on the table tickled his nose and he sneezed repeatedly. What was he suffering from? Hay fever and the flowers were troubling him. Suddenly, he heard the voice of a young lady in red. She acted like the wife of the owner of that house. Pay attention to the word, acted like. When you act like someone, you are an imposter. Let's continue. She told him that she had come to get her jewels to wear at a party. Danby requested the lady to let him go home. She asked him to open the safe as she needed the jewels but she had forgotten the number. Number on the safe, right. Danby willingly opened the safe without gloves. The lady got the jewels. On the third day, a policeman arrested him for the jewel robbery at Shotover Grange. His fingerprints were found at the robbed place. He confessed that he had opened the safe for the young wife of the owner of the house. But in reality, the owner's wife was about 60 years old. She said the story was not true. Now, he was the assistant librarian in the prison. He always thought of that charming young lady who has befooled him. What is befool? Making fool of someone. So the lady fooled Horace. Now he did not believe in the thought of honor among thieves. I hope you have understood something from the chapter and something from the summary I have discussed. Let us check how much through this multiple choice questions. Question number one. Horace Danby had a business of making toys, making locks, writing books, making jewelry. Correct. He used to make locks. So option number B. Question number two. Horace Danby's hobby was? What is a hobby? Something that you like to do in your free time. Watching movies. Option two. Listening to music. Option 3, going to the park. Option 4, reading rare and expensive books. Great work. Option 4, reading rare and expensive books. Question number 3. The safe was hidden in plain sight, behind the cupboard, behind the curtain or behind a painting. Good, behind the painting. Question number four. Horace Danby was suffering from cold and cough, backache, hay fever or he was absolutely healthy. Right, 
he was suffering from hay fever. Question number 5. What did the young lady threaten to do? Inform the police? To call the neighbours? To raise alarm? Or let Sherry lose at him? Now, this is a tricky one. What would be the answer? Some of you must have written to inform the police or to raise alarm. Both of them are correct. Let's continue. Horace than be stole dash in a year. How many times? Only once, twice, thrice or every month. Great. Only once. Question number 7. One saying that would suit the story. Looks can be deceptive. There is honor among thieves. You have to be a thief to catch a thief. You reap what you sow. What do you think would match the story? Complete story, please pay attention. Some might have written looks can be deceptive or you reap what you sow. Both of them are correct. Question number 8. What is the biggest mistake Horace did when opening the safe? 1. Trusting the lady. 2. Not taking care of his hay fever. 3. Lowering his guard. 4. Taking off his gloves. Now, you might feel that all the options are correct, but you have to mark only one. Click, pay close attention and check. Yes, the right answer would be taking off the gloves because if he hadn't taken off the gloves, there would be no fingerprints and if there were no fingerprints, he would not have been arrested. Great going. So I hope you have built an understanding of the lesson. So we'll sign off today and I hope through this lesson you were able to read the short story, A Question of Trust with Understanding, Identify Events and Main Idea along with Sequence of Ideas. Appreciate the story and interpret the events and theme of the story and connect it with your own knowledge or personal experiences. Thank you for attending the lesson with us. We'll wind off the part one here. Please go back, read the lesson again. You can watch the recording again. Enjoy and we'll be soon back with part two of the lesson. Thank you.